What's up, y'all, and welcome into the Jack Vita Show. I'm your host, as always, Jack Vita. No exit interview today because nobody got eliminated this week. Uh, but guess what, guys? We got a very fun and special episode. Uh, back by popular demand, we've got Miranda Rose Harrison returning to the show. Everyone loved hearing from her last week, so she's back again this week. Glad to be here, Jack. And we got a special guest, Kim Martina, that's here as well. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, Miranda. I appreciate you asking me to join today. Thank you both for joining me. Brooke is still on vacation. She'll be back next week. Flying back from Puerto Rico today, actually. Okay. Uh, so great to have you guys here to break down this episode. And since you guys are off the show now, you're able to hop on these podcasts, talk about the show. I want to start with, and we, we're going to sink our teeth into everything from this episode, but I want to start first, uh, Kim, I spoke with you a couple weeks ago in your exit interview, and now we'll get to do more of a long form thing, which will be fun. And I'm sure we'll kind of jump around and talk about a bunch of stuff from the show, even stuff from when you guys were still on it. I want to ask you first and foremost, Kim, what'd you think of the episode last week? And Miranda's decision to take the deal. You know, what? I thought last week's episode was really, really good. Probably, I would say, one of my favorite episodes this season so far. Um, <clears throat> not because Miranda was off the show, but <laughs> because of everything that transpired and the character development and getting to hear Miranda's thoughts about what she was doing and how she was doing it. And... Um, and then, of course, boom, she dropped the mic on the way out. I, I thought that was fantastic and really set up this week's episode well. I, I thought that was great. Um, I agree 100% with what Miranda did. I would have taken the deal also and or taken the personal offer. And, um, you know, I, ideally, I would have loved it if Miranda had a low number in her case and therefore got a great deal in addition to getting 40 grand in her pocket. Um, and therefore she would have stayed in the show and she would have gotten to pick somebody else to be eliminated. I would have loved that. That would have been Kim's perfect world, <laughs> but that's not how it happened, unfortunately, but on the plus side, we've got Miranda here today, and, and together we get to talk about the new episode. Yay. Well, thank you. I tried to make it as entertaining as possible last episode. <laughs> it was good. It was really good. I wish I had the $100 in my case, too. Don't worry. because <laughs> Yeah, that's what I wanted to see. And I had so much intel. I just wanted to just, I couldn't bring it back with me. I had to leave it at the, the camp, so... So, Kim, you would have done pretty much you would you have played it pretty much the same as Miranda did? You would have been when Aaron is kind of dictating who he wants you to send home and you would have spurned him and gone with targeting Alyssa or somebody else. Maybe you wouldn't have taken the orders from him. And then you also would have taken that money if you were given the opportunity. You know what? If I if I had been in Miranda's shoes, um, I would not have played the excursion the same way because as soon as number one, I didn't trust Aaron. I, I, I mean, and I think Miranda knew it too, but we all knew that Aaron and Rob were together. So yeah. if Rob, the biggest difference is the fact that I knew that Rob was coming after me. Miranda wasn't necessarily on Rob's radar to be eliminated. So if Aaron had told me, go get case number one or number two, um, I would have come back saying, you know what? Couldn't find it. But here I found this case instead, in which case Aaron would have gone in against the banker and hopefully would have lost. But who knows? Um, because if he had won against the banker, then it would have probably been me. So that's why. I think I would have played that part different only because of where we were situated in the um, hierarchy of, of alliances there. Um, 
But other than that, actually playing the game itself, I I would have probably done the same thing. If you look at it right now, 66% of the players that have gone against the banker have won. Okay. So the odds are good that if you're playing the banker, you've got a better than 50% chance to make a great deal and move on. Um, so I, I probably would have thrown a lot of arguments out there how Alyssa shouldn't play against the banker because she just shouldn't have, she, she would have had a better chance of being safe and whomever being out of the game. So that's that, that one piece of it. Though I think really with the excursion is the big piece where I would have played differently, but that's because of what my situation was compared to Miranda's. Miranda, any thoughts? No, I mean, it, it that makes complete sense. Like if, if you kind of think about it, um, you put yourself in my shoes at the same time. Like I think it, you know, even if, Kim was still in it. I still think Aaron and Alyssa would have wanted to uh, eliminate Stephanie, you know? So even if he, you know, Aaron did go up against the banker, I still think Kim, if she was still in at that point would have been safe. I think they were really trying to go after Stephanie and I've seen them try to go after Stephanie since like day one. And then I would think that maybe they would think that, you know, um, Kim, we're not going to get her out right now, but we're going to get Stephanie out. But that possibly, you know, and that's only and then honestly, possibly could it have even been me at that point? Because, you know, that's when Rob said he didn't trust me. And there could have been that underlining, you know, blind side as well. But, you know, that's when I started feeling a little, OK, what's going on? I, I still think at that moment it would have been Stephanie them trying to get out because Stephanie is a really strong player, like super strong. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Like, if you don't try to get her out in that moment like she is going to run you guys all over so i understand i mean at this point it's starting to become like you know we have to start eliminating these tough players uh, i don't i don't know i don't know if they would have gone after me or gone after stephanie i mean rob obviously didn't trust me yeah. and um i don't I think Rob looked at you kind of being on the fringe, his hierarchy of minions, right? Uh, yeah, the I one think, he could use, puppets. Yeah, I, I think he I think he saw you just from what he said in the show as disposable. You know, yeah. it's like, okay, well, if Miranda's not safe and I've got to take somebody out and I can't get Kim, I can't get Stephanie, who were really his two primary targets. Yeah. Um, and Amy was right up there too. I think that um, he would have looked at the possibility of losing you knowing that he couldn't get to us at that time. Um, and so, but as far as the decision to that, when you said you would have um, eliminated Alyssa on the way out, a hundred percent, Alyssa was, she was shady. Um, so, I agree that Alyssa needed to be eliminated, but at this point, halfway through the game, um, and I don't know, have you seen many of Rob's seasons or any of them on Survivor? No, I haven't seen any of his. I, I just saw Alyssa and Aaron's alliance become more strong than mm -hmm. Aaron and Rob's, and so when I saw that Rob started to become paranoid and act like, you know, like, wow, is Aaron going against me? I really wanted to like, I, I know that, you know, there was a part of me that wanted to get him out at that moment, but to get Alyssa out would just absolutely destroy all three of them to me. See, and I think it would have strengthened Rob. My, my, my thoughts on it were that it would have well, strengthened Rob by getting rid of Alyssa because you've got Alyssa and Aaron with Rob yeah. as their fringe and you could do one of two things. You can leave Alyssa and Aaron alone and get rid of the head of the snake. But between the two of them, Alyssa and Aaron, I think I would have gotten rid of Aaron over Alyssa 
just because um, he was the connector. And but Aaron was safe. Yeah. Huh? Aaron had immunity, right? I, I don't know if he had immunity. I think he was just, uh, he didn't have to go up against the banker. He exactly. It was either you're going against the banker or you're not. I don't think he was immune, right? No. Mm. And I don't think anybody was immune. And I do yeah. want to say Aaron, but then again, it's like, well, Aaron, with these challenges, I felt like uh, Alyssa would be more of a threat during the challenges than anything. And that Aaron wouldn't. And that would just be, you know, obviously judging of book by its cover, but um, mm -hmm. that's how I saw it. I was like, okay, well, I'd rather sure. lose Alyssa, who is, could be really good and has been really good at every challenge. Absolutely. Um, rather than, you know, have Aaron gone. I see. I I can see that. And, and I thought about that when you did it. It's like, okay, between the two of them, she's getting rid of the stronger of the two physically. Yeah. But... I don't know. I I think I may have leaned into getting rid of the head of the snake on that one. It's a two-headed snake, I'll tell you that. Oh, multi-headed. <laughs> multi-headed. Yeah. yeah. I mean, wouldn't it be insane if Alyssa got Rob out? If I was Alyssa, I would want to get Rob out myself. Hundred percent. If I were Alyssa and were in that yeah. and and she was able to take somebody out. I think that Rob, even though she was so she was so tunnel visioned on Stephanie, yeah. But I honestly think strategically the best move for her would have been to eliminate Rob because then she would have one hundred percent had Aaron. He, oh, uh, yeah. Period. Protect and um, but probably wouldn't have had anybody else, but she wouldn't have anybody else with Rob either. So, well, Aaron, you know, was Jordan. So close to Jordan and, and trying to get close to Stephanie. That's why Aaron felt so bad in the last episode. Oh, was, please. But Stephanie deserved an Oscar for the performance on the step. Oh, oh my God. Acting. And, and I mean, I know she was stressed because I know Stephanie. Oh right. yeah, if you're like, a target, like you know, hundred percent. That's she had, the, she had the forehead vein going. She she, she was, was controlling herself hard. She was but mad, sure. she she did the tears, and they weren't dry ass tears. Um, she did she did she flipped it on him so well. Made in, him in, sense. in saying, "I trusted you." I was a friend to you, uh, all this. And in reality, no, she knew that he was so far aligned with Rob and Alyssa at that point that she knew it. She knew it. And I thought it was a phenomenal performance yeah. followed up by act two over in the pavilion with Rob on the swing, <laughs> oh my God. on the porch swing. It's like, Stephanie rounds of applause for that and that's definitely building up to you know i mean there that camp is divided at this point and i can't imagine now here's the worst thing is stephanie actually shares a tent with these girls yes with Alyssa and jordan so right now it's four with the night owls three with rob Alyssa, and aaron and jordan sitting in the middle so it's going to be interesting to see if she thinks um, strategically or emotionally and who's going to give her the best offer to scoop her up. Right. That's where it's going to get fun. So it's either going to be four to four or a clear majority alliance, five to three. I can't wait. Well, she's smart. She better choose the right one. Nope. She's going to choose whatever's right in her mind. But again, I mean, Miranda, you know, as well as I do, you only know what's going on in front of you. Yeah. You don't know what they're talking about out in the water or in a tent or late at night or early in the morning or anywhere else. And you want to know, too. And that's where paranoia <laughs> comes in, because you sit back and you, have, you watch these people feet from you have these conversations and mm -hmm. it's like, are they talking about how beautiful the water is? Or are they talking about an alliance? Are they switching up on you? Um, you know, you it starts to get really chaotic. It is. But when you see 
all the heads turn, go, and they're looking right at you up on the pavilion or at your group of people you're sitting with. Yeah. They're talking, they're talking about you. And if you're not in the conversation, you are the conversation. I was going to say that's exactly from the words of Stephanie herself. Yeah. Mm hmm. Well, this is really fun. You guys bring it up because we basically the episode picks up of off the events of last episode. Once again, thank you, Miranda, for stirring the pot <laughs> and bringing the drama. I know you made Kim proud with that. <laughs> Absolutely. So we have a new alliance. At least the show is telling us that this is a new alliance. And this is very interesting because um, Nick starts talking about how he's been with Rob and Aaron the whole game. And he's been out of the loop and he's getting really angry about it. He did not know that Stephanie was the target in the last episode. He's been, like I said, out of the loop. So we've got a new alliance, the Night Owls. And I can't... I, I, that was cute. That was really good. I thought the, that was a great little um, clip of the alliance. I loved it. They did edit. The I'm producer, glad they showed it. The did a great job. Yeah. And I, I'm an honorary owl, owl so. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, if we're up till three in the morning, like we exactly. were up, guys. And then all of a sudden it'd be like 730 in the morning, wake up, drink some coffee and go to a challenge. Yeah, we were in survival mode the whole time. Mm hmm. And uh, we had, Kim, this is yeah, a little yeah. bit like uh, Philip, the specialist, one of Rob's uh, teammates, because on Redemption Island, they each have their own kind of owl that they are, which I thought was fun. <laughs> Philip would do this on right. both of the seasons of Survivor, where he gives everybody mm -hmm. a nickname and a role. And it kind of reminds me of what my dad would do when he coached Little League, where it's like he wants everybody to feel valuable part of the team, even the kid who plays the minimal amount of innings and lets the ball go through his legs and is never gets on base. <laughs> so yeah. you've got the barn owl. The uh, Stephanie's the barn owl. Nick is the hunting owl. Dawson is the long-eared owl. And Amy is the gray-horned owl. I love this whole explanation. Which kind of owls would you guys have been if you were part of the, uh, if you were still around for this new night owl alliance? Does it have to be like a real owl? No. So I would be the sleepy owl. <laughs> the sleepy the, owl? You, yeah. I mean, it's an owl that wants to stay up and be a part of everything, but tends to uh, fall asleep really fast and then wakes <laughs> up again. It's like, oh, I'm a part of the conversation. <laughs> I was doing that a lot. We would be up till like three in the morning and then we would be at the tent and we would have tent talk. And then we would all be at the end of the bed talking to each other and I'd start to drift off. And then I would jolt myself up and try to get back in the conversation all over again. And I'm like, I'm here. I'm here. So yeah, I, I would be, he would be the, the, the snowy owl, the, the, uh, what's it? Oh it's no, like I don't do snow. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful, what is it? I can't remember. The big white owl. It's so beautiful. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. Is it the they're barred owl? Of, the, they're kind of a docile owl though. They're, <laughs> they're not as brutal. I would say, I would probably be like, like a Western spotted owl. They're, they're, they're a spotted gray owl. Um, and well, so I would be a Western spot because they have great camouflage. They're a desert owl. They've got great camouflage. So they are able to kind of fit in with their surroundings, but they are brutal. They're, they're the ones that you see carrying off a rattlesnake in their talons. And I would, I would be like this with talons. So yeah. Is it, is what kind of owl would I be? Um, There's no owl. You know, Someone's going to be <laughs> No, I, the think, owl. I think you'd be Owl from Winnie the Pooh because Owl <laughs> knew everything. Everybody came to Owl when they needed an answer. It's like, Owl, why is the sky blue? And Owl always knew the answer, even if he made up a bunch of crap for it. He still <laughs> knew the answer and gave it to him. So I think with your sports background, you'd be Owl from Winnie the Pooh. That's Or the Owl from Mr. Tootsie Pop. How many licks does he oh. take to the center of a How many licks does he get to the center? A one. 
a two. Crunch. <laughs> Hi, Peaches. A three. She says, hello. Okay, get down, mommy's <laughs> recording. That's good. I like, I like, I'll accept either of those answers. Um, all right, so you mentioned the uh, Aaron and Stephanie conversation. Stephanie is crying. Uh, Miranda, did you have any thoughts on this conversation? Oh, Stephanie with Aaron? Mm -hmm. Aaron's falling for it all over again. Like, I already know Stephanie's going in, and she's just going, like, it was, it was great. You know, in my moment, I was like, man, I wish I would have kind of cried a little bit. I was more angry than anything, <laughs> you know? And I was like, You don't strike me as much of a crier. No, I hate crying. No, I do cry a lot. I'm a sensitive crier. <laughs> um, like, I cry, like, when somebody wins the lottery, like, or when some, when something happy is happening. Um, oh, okay, happy crier. But, yeah, I'm a happy crier. Um, but, yeah, no, when I saw it, it was just, I don't know. It, it, I think it's leading up to an amazing seventh episode. Um, I think she knows what she's doing. She's created this narrative for herself since day one, and she has not lost this narrative and just the fact that Aaron's sitting there like being gullible and he literally like told her the whole plan like oh it's me and it's Aaron and it's Alyssa and it's like oh yeah. so I didn't... Oh, I'm sorry go ahead she milked the cow <laughs> I absolutely loved that she turned the tables on him and when he's like well you know I kind of was kind of it was kind of my plan but they agreed with it and stuff did not miss a beat. Who's they? Yeah. She said, but I why? Think, like, why I, would you do that? I think that, that she, she caught Aaron off guard. I don't think she, he was expecting her to ask that question so much it's so because bad. that's when he started getting a little rattled and he started getting emotional about it. And we both know, Miranda, that, that Aaron was emotional a lot during the game. Yeah, he, was, he even said it, I think, during my episode, was like, I'm just crying a lot this, you know, this episode or something. But even when he was trying to talk to me, he was, um, I, I, thought, I was like, do you have a cold? Why are you sniffling? And he's like, you're just one of my closest friends. And I'm just like, okay. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I love that she turned the tables on him and said, so who's they? You know, and he's like, uh, well, Alyssa and Rob. And it's like, okay. Plus, so you know, he gave her so much information. Hey, validation. Good job, Aaron. You're great. She knew. I mean, okay. she knew. He just confirmed it. Oh, yeah. No, for sure. I'm, and maybe if she wasn't crying, maybe he wouldn't have felt so wanting to give her all of him maybe he would have been like oh i can't really give her anything but the fact that she really cried and was like listen like that really hurt my heart he was like oh god i'm so sorry let me fix this that i already tried to do yeah you know? yeah no he he came on hard with the empathy and and to some degree you could tell he was anxious and it, you know, I mean, he was anxious most of the time out there. He really like, was, it, it you know, back, yeah. like, yeah. And so I think that um, the idea of losing a friend maybe kind of got to him, but at the same time, I, I don't know how much that mattered. I think it was more of a game friendship that he was worried about. Who, Aaron? No. Yeah. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe Aaron was in love with her. I think he was falling for Al Alyssa. And no, Alyssa. Stephanie. I'm talking oh, about. Oh, 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 okay. I thought we were talking about. Alyssa. Yeah, no. Um, Stephanie, I heard, listen, I've heard Aaron talk about Stephanie. Stephanie has always been a target. Like, since from day one, I would hear him, but then there would always be somebody else that would get out, which was very confusing. But I always did see her, and it was always because she was a very strong individual and you couldn't, you can't bull crap a bull crapper. Yeah. And you know what? And she was, she was a target from when she lied to Rob about the briefcase. Um, episode two, round two, she was not a target then only because like when we went to Bankers Temple. Yeah. Right. Only because I, she wasn't in the bottom and I wasn't putting her up. 
right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wait, which for challenge two? For challenge two, when I played against the banker, right? Was that challenge two? Yeah. Okay, that was uh, me climbing the trees. Yes. Okay. So she was safe that round because... But she still was nervous, too. She still felt nervous. No, she she didn't feel nervous in round two only because it... As soon as we knew it was me, which we knew it was going to be oh, me okay. going against the banker the whole time. So she knew that she knew oh. that she was safe. If I was going against the banker, I wasn't going to point at her. So, um, you know, and Aaron and Rob were safe. Yeah. And there were too many people ahead of her. But then she wasn't safe again until last until Monday night's episode yeah. when she was safe with Rob. Yeah, which that you know what that that's it was a good immunity for her. You know that mm-hmm. was the first immunity. Um, even though it was with Rob, that was a very confused. You saw how everyone was paired up too, though. Every the white uh, white uh, the the night owls were not paired up with another night owl. So that was very right. odd. everybody was split up. Um, so that was that kind of set up that banker's um, briefcase. Yeah, the bonus. The, yeah, the banker's bonus, which mm-hmm. that at the same time, I'm I, I'm trying to think on how that could have worked out because to me that peed me off. I did not like that banker's bonus. That wasn't okay. a bonus in any way. It would have been a bonus if Amy's briefcase was a losing briefcase. Okay, yes. Then it would have been a bonus. Uh, you know what? It's all about perspective and who are you rooting for? If you're rooting for Rob and Alyssa and Aaron, then yeah, it's a bonus because one of them would have gone home. If you're rooting for the night owls, then it's not a bonus because she didn't get to take somebody out. So it's fan perspective on, on exactly. that. And and she she played a really good game. I mean, she stuck it to the banker. She kept saying you know, no deal, no deal. And she went to the end and just for her to not be able to get the person out, you know, would have been cool if it was a double elimination and she was like, all right, Alyssa, all right, Aaron, you're out of here. Or no, I guess, cause yeah. Cause Rob was immune. Yeah. Season two, who knows? Banker's bonus still come into play with a different twist. I'll bet. Man, that would be insane. Or Hey, like the ones we've been seeing, bring Claudia and Kim back. Yeah. But, Okay, I, I'm assuming we'll get to the board and Amy, how she played, right? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to wait to, I've got something to say about that, but. Okay, well, well yeah, let's touch on this uh, excursion here. Um, I'm curious to know, actually, before we do the excursion, one more thing I think that's important. There's a big scene between Rob and Stephanie that we haven't talked about. Uh, I'm sure you've got some thoughts on that, Kim. Absolutely. I mean, Steph and I were on the same page as far as Rob was concerned. Um, I think that socially within the game, she did what she had to do to um, really open up more conversation with Rob, because at that point they didn't know that they were going to be partnered together. Um, So definitely a little bit of foreshadowing, putting that in there. Um, but it, it cracked me up when, when Rob's like, you've got to calm down a little bit. And, <laughs> and it's yeah. like, um, I don't know about you, Miranda, but men that say you need to calm down a little bit. Yeah. He's I'll like, calm whoa, down whoa, when whoa. I'm ready to calm down. It's not up to you to tell me, me how to calm down or how to react to what happened at the banker's temple and stuff like that. I just, he's, I thought that. Um, he's calling Dawson Dalton and calling him an idiot. And then yeah, yeah. nobody's saying anything to him. And then Stephanie is just like, I want to get this rat out, which is a, a, a plausible thing. You know, she's just saying it like she is. And then Rob's like, hey, you know, let's calm down here with what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, no, Rob, stop trying to control the conversation. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, thank you, Rob, for letting me know how I should feel in this situation. And then he's like, well, I've I've been dodging. He goes, you barely got grazed by a bullet. 
and I've been dodging bullets like the Matrix since the beginning. <laughs> you, you, you. No, you haven't. He was immune three times. And he was whining the whole time. He kept trying to like go to people and say, oh my God, protect me. Please, I'm paranoid. Why? I just got here. I shouldn't have a target on my back. Like, well, you're a great competitor. Why would you come into a competition thinking that you're not going to be competition? Exactly. You know, especially, I mean, he won the hunting and gathering one with Aaron. He won the... Um, he won the Swingers Club. Yeah, he won the dollar briefcase. Club. He won. Um, he did not win the next one, but that's because Amy put his put it in. That was the whole who's trying to throw the competition more thing, and then Amy ends up putting Rob in against the banker. He takes me out, and then he's safe this last week. So the the times he's been eligible he's crazy. to be taken out in six episodes, he's been 50% safe. safe. I know. 100% safe on 50% of them. And the right. other ones, you know, it, it just, it, it amazes me. The he's first playing a remarkable game. I mean, he's playing a remarkable game, but, you know, like like we all say, it's all about luck. And, you know, yeah, it can happen. And even well, the I first that- one, he was safe. He, he made he made a final two deal with Aaron in the Jeep on the way in. You know, so socially, the guy is um, really good. He, I think I said it when we were talking, he... He's like spraying Chanel number five around the camp. It, that is Rob's mist. And people go, oh, I do smell good and follow him. And they just. Mm, I couldn't so, speak up anymore. You guys all knew how I felt. So I couldn't speak up anymore on that. Um, so. But I, but gradually, slowly but surely, because it, I think for a while people were like, oh, no, we can get them out. We'll be able to get them out. And, and then all of a sudden people are realizing, crap, he's winning all these comps and he's immune. We can't get rid of him. And that is Rob to a T. Um, even like you mentioned when you brought up uh, Redemption Island, you know, He surrounds himself with people he can control and he's done it and done it and done it. And, and then sits there and goes, well, if they were smart, they'd get rid of me early. They'd get rid of me at the beginning. Yeah. But they never do. But what about those, those who know about him trying to control people, you can pretend to be controlled to a point. You know what I'm saying? Like if he thinks he can control you and you can definitely do a little few gestures here and there to kind of trick him. Um, but I feel like that could be his downfall, you know, in, in retrospect is, I mean, he, I, for some reason he's questioning like, Oh, is Aaron doing the reverse reverse? I mean, it's like, why, why is that out so far out of the picture? Why is that? Why would that be crazy? That would be an epic move, you know, for because you know, Aaron was misted. Aaron yep. was misted by Rob and Rob knew it. He's, he just, he just has a really great read on people. Okay. He really does know how to read people well. And it's not even so much about controlling a person, but it's more like the weak gazelle. You know, you don't have to be the fastest one. You just need to not be the slowest one or you're going to get eaten by the lion. Right. So he knows that as long as he's got, weak gazelles they're with them (laughs) they can be physically strong which is fine that's why that's why i don't think he has any issue with Alyssa. i really don't think he does she's competitive you know she can hold her weight i mean i'm sure he would rely on Alyssa more than aaron in any competition uh to protect him socially yeah (laughs) but i i yeah but like he, to get up that tree, if he needed to rely on Alyssa to get up the tree and get all the arrows, because in reality, I mean, Aaron sa- or Rob saved Aaron's game that day because absolutely. Aaron get three, yeah, three arrows. 
And so he yeah. took what he could get. Yeah, but, you know, so Alyssa, to some degree, was a weak gazelle. Um, Claudia was a weak gazelle. She really didn't seem to have a whole lot of strategy that we saw, um, but she was she was willing to get her hands dirty in the name of Rob. Yeah. And personally, I don't blame her for that so much because she was um, be, being the two known people coming into the game. Um, as long as he was there, he was a bigger target than her, you know? Um, yeah. and, and I think it would have been very different if she had been the only celebrity that was in there. Um, you know, Jamil, I, I said it in the episode, he was Rob's vice president. He was willing to take action and Rob knew that. Your vice and, president. And do you know, do you know why that could be? Because I know Jamil didn't even know who Rob was till he got there. Do you think it's yeah. just because they had like men bro things in common, like the same mm -hmm. age? No, I think it was Claudia, to be honest with you. Yes, because Jamil was in love with Claudia. Oh, Jamil loved Claudia and Rob had Claudia because they had that celebrity thing going on. And therefore, Jamil became associated with Rob via Claudia. But I think Jamil saw through a lot of it. But sometimes you just get so entrenched in it that you can't get yourself out without making yourself a target. And I think that's, and I think that's where he was. And I think that's exactly what happened, you know, in the second episode, it's like, you, you beeline it straight to the beach, straight out to the water to talk to Rob and Rob, Claudia, Jamil, Nick, all turn around and look at you up on the pavilion. Guess what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, I'm not in the conversation. Therefore, I am the conversation, even though I was sitting with, um, I think you were up there when it was you, me, Dawson, um, Jordan. Yeah. Alyssa was up there at that time. And that's that's the first time. That's when Dawson, Dawson keeps wanting to have an alliance. That cracked me up last night, by the way. Oh, with you? Because, because no, when we were in up there as a group and it's like, are, are we forming like an outsider's alliance, the others? Um, and Pinky promised and no one would put in their Pinky. And then it was last night or on Monday night's episode when he's like, is this a new alliance? <laughs> he just wants to use the uh, word alliance so bad. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was cute. Well, yeah, I mean, it does suck. Like if all of a sudden, like you're not, in, you're not a part of an alliance, you know, or something's happening and you're just like, oh, why, why not me? Why not, you know? So, I mean, I can understand there's, but then again, the alliance has changed when, you know, Alyssa was a part of your team, you know, Kim, and then overnight, uh, literally overnight, again, I don't know the true answers or what switched up or what went through her mind. So sorry, my dog's crazy. Um, but yeah, that I have questions on, on why that was, cause that happened so fast and for her to create this huge plan just to get you out when you were helping her out the whole time. And when I wasn't, she was, she was a teeny tiny blip. I, I kind of half wonder sometimes if it's because she got the personal offer in episode two and both you and Nick split, you know, oh, owned yeah. up to having it, but she didn't even own up to having it to anybody except Aaron. And, and I knew up there and I was like, no, you should keep the 20,000. You you busted your butt climbing up the tree, getting all those arrows. And I really failed down here. And she's like, okay. Yeah, <laughs> it's but, like, oh, oh, I know. I, I know. And well, everybody else who was a partner and. It's know. like you win as a team, you die as a team. Um, <laughs> unless Alyssa's on your team, apparently. So, you know, that was just, she was actually. I wanted to trust her. I really did. I wanted to trust her. And, um, and she gave me too many reasons not to, she gave me too many. She, she moved way up. Like if I had changed my mind on Jamil, Alyssa had a good chance of going, except I didn't want Jamil, Claudia and Rob in there together. Still. That yeah. Was the only thing. I, 
she's been in the game being protected way too long. I mean, oh, yeah. just way too long. So, you know, she got to go. <laughs> We've taken over this. Sorry, Jack. <laughs> no, no, no. This is people want to hear from you guys. This is how I if you watch my podcast, I let the guests talk and I just steer you guys into what I want to hear you guys talk about. So um, let's talk about the excursion. I don't think we have to dive too deep into it, but I'd love to know what your guys strategy would be in this. So obviously part of it is who your partner is. So if Rob's your partner, he's just going to steamroll you and kind of do whatever he wants to do, or at least he's going to try to do that. Uh, and then if you have Aaron, that kind of limits what you might be able to do. So let's just say hypothetically, let's just say you have Nick or Dawson as your partner. And either one of these guys asks, Hey, what do you think we should do? Cause they seem like the type of guys that would value your input and let you just, you know, make some uh, decisions or at least talk about these things. So, um, Rob makes the bold decision. He says, well, forget the banker's bonus. Let's just go for the higher value. Would you guys have gone for that further extender, like the yes. longest one? That's what you guys would have done and gone for the highest total? I, I would have. I, I did, Like I said, I genuinely do not care for, I don't give a crap about snakes. I've been bitten by them multiple times. I would have known that they're not venomous and I would just, go for it. I've been bitten by worse, honestly. So that would have been such a, a doozy, but imagine if, you know, I got a partner with somebody who was just absolutely scared and, uh, it would have to be, I don't know. I mean, Aaron wasn't scared. Aaron surprised me on this one. Aaron and, you know, snakes. Amy kicks butt all the time, but Aaron, he was like, Oh, I ain't afraid of snakes. And oh, Rob's over there saying, I don't do snakes. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, I was like, oh, it's reverse now. Look at Aaron. I I think I would probably strategically, if I'm with Rob, you betcha. Let's let's kick butt. I mean, and I would have been okay putting my hand in there for the snakes. That I don't like snakes at all, but they don't bother me um, all that much. The swimming part of it to get out there. I would have been fine with that. I mean, I, I, yeah, we had life vests on too. That's like the only thing that I physically, I would have excelled at in this game would have been that swimming part of it. And I'm tall and I've got long arms. So I would have probably been fine with the swimming part of it. Yeah, I agree with the st strategy, go out there and especially in Rob's position and as Stephanie, hundred percent, I agree with what they were both saying and thinking in this because she really needed immunity because obviously there's people coming for her and same thing with Rob. Therefore, you know, if you're immune, that knocks out two, um, two targets in the game that you can't get rid of. Not this round. Yeah. So I, but I mean, like if I were paired up with, yeah, I felt bad for Amy and Aaron because, I mean, even Amy said both of their arms were so short, they couldn't get the last extender. So they only had the first two really to go for. <laughs> and, you know, they got as much as they could with that. But when your arm doesn't reach to the back of the snake cage to be able to release the extender... There, there's not too much there should have been a, there should have been a redo because i think I, I remember when she we were doing the archery and she was amy was too short yeah. to reach the the bow and arrow so they yeah they gave her a box stool. they gave her a step stool so i think <laughs> there should have been something done about this everybody should have been able to reach the bottoms of those the third extender i mean when when you physically can't i mean you can't make your arm grow you know to do that so yeah. when you physically can't do that that that's definitely a disadvantage. I'm really surprised that um, that they didn't do something about that. But you know what? There's other people that you know aren't are too tall to or have a bad knee or something that limits them on any given challenge. It just so happened that it was the two shortest people with all the shortest arms going together. Yeah, you know, it, it definitely put them at a disadvantage, but you know what? It's the luck of the draw. Yeah. 
Well, when people, there are people who had long enough arms that did not get the extender, too. Yeah. Right? Shame on them. Shame on them. Get the extender. Those get the extender. Dawson. Those are probably fed anyways. Yeah. It's like Dawson. Um, no, Dawson was ready to lose. He's like, oh, I don't know. I just, I'd rather give up this one. He's like, I, I'm not really targeted right now. Yeah, He's like, no. Let me and sit this Jordan's down. like, Jordan's like, screw this. I'm going for it. That's why when they were running, I, okay, I'm sorry, but that cracked me up. And Dawson goes, you've got bigger balls than me. <laughs> if I was Jordan, I would have been like, yeah, they're on my chest. <laughs> no, but uh, it's, I was, I was definitely, I loved watching this episode. I loved seeing, I mean, with the whole Joe saying they don't bite and then Nick gets bite, bitten too by hard. a snake. Yeah. And then Joe's like, oh, they don't bite too hard. Um, they definitely bite though. But I, in my head doing that, I would have been like, you know what? This is, this is reality. I was like, maybe they fed these snakes before. And then all of a sudden I'm like, no, I don't think so. I think they're, they're going to bite them. And then they sure did. So, right. Uh, but my technique, actually, I think to light up that, uh, that, what is it called, that tiki, whatever Stephanie was doing, floating on your back and keeping an eye on the flame was the best thing. I mean, you, could, you definitely protect your energy by floating on your back and kind of doing, just getting to that point. And then you can use your energy by focusing, you know, getting up in there and lighting that torch. Yeah, so, I thought she did great with that. Yeah, that was good. And then Aaron, you know, he did... Uh, what he lost and he lost his flame, didn't he? He had to go back yeah. and his flame. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. Yeah, it happens. Yeah. But this excursion felt like a flashback to like the Rivals Three X's Two era of the challenge on MTV. They used to do some kind of challenge like this, where they have to yeah. like stick their head in like a a box of some kind of gross bug. Which a Miranda would excel at. She would be great at that because I would be she like, does it every day. Guess what it is? Oh yeah. Ooh. But they're doing that more and more. You're seeing these little um, fear factor tidbits yeah. happening. Um, they did it on House of Villains, um, mm -hmm. season one that just just finished. Actually, the traitors with before. Rachel Riley. They did it on the traitors. So I think we're seeing a little bit of that fear factor esque feature. Um, come and yeah. play on some of these. Yeah, they definitely, Fear Factor is, uh, I, you've seen it, um, hopefully coming back to TV. They're doing, uh, they're saying that Deal or No Deal Island actually has been done so well that now they're thinking about doing reboots of Fear Factor, which, you know. But they're looking at doing reboots with um, a game show reality competition yes. element not just straight up fear factor no but. which is perfect because straight up fear factor was always like a no but the fact that there's fear factor and competition right up my alley again now we all know <laughs> about fear factor and how you have to drink certain um liquids from bodies and <laughs> you know i could do it but i can't promise that i won't throw it up <laughs> right? And so that's where you lose out on the money. If you eat something and you throw it up, you don't win. You, and that's how fear factor yeah. works. So it's like, you know, I, I could do it. I just don't know how my body would take it. <laughs> so it's okay. a whole new thing. I think the one thing we haven't touched on yet, though, was the banker's time. Yeah, we've got, I think, Miranda, you can tag out whenever you want and Kim and I can wrap up. So whenever you got to run, you let us know. So continue with your thought, Kim, and then I want Miranda to get a chance to share anything that she wanted to touch on in her final Definitely. minutes here. So I found this board really interesting. So I'm looking at it right now on my TV. Um, Amy's initial board, because it went from a penny to $750, and then all of a sudden it's a half a million to $3,500,000. So that from $750 to $500,000 is a huge, huge differential. Um, and, and we're going to see that, I mean, as the amounts keep going up and up, but I thought Amy got off to a rocky start, knocking out a bunch of the high ones, but is that really the worst thing to have happen? Because it's going to give her a lower offer, right. which gives you a better opportunity to, um, be able to take a deal. And her initial offer wasn't that bad. 
But eventually it came down to Amy had the $100 on the left side. On the right side, she had $850, um, $1,500 and $3 million, or $2 million, Those were her four cases that were up there. And the banker gives the offer of eight twenty five. dollars So the only one that would have been a good deal is if she had $100 in her case. And then there were the three on the left side. So I think she did the right thing to actually go again, because either that offer is going to drop, but it's never going to drop under a hundred or the offer is going to go up. You can take the deal and be putting the money in the bank as it is. It ended up knocking out and he didn't, you know, drop it a whole lot, but the bottom line is Amy had a good deal at the 825 and had a great deal at the 400,000 going all the way, you know? So she was kind of in a win-win with that. The only way she loses is, is if she has the hundred dollars and doesn't take the deal. I just wish she got her moment because she has been waiting for this moment to be on stage, yep. to beat the banker, to go all the way. And she did and she was just wasn't able to have that moment, but I'm I'm hoping to see it come soon. Um, yeah. But at that side, just I really wish she did get her moment in in yeah. that, that nighttime for sure. Absolutely, been- I thought she did a great job. She was super confident in um, what she was doing. Really, her only pause was one time when she said, "Let me ask the crew," and. Yeah. I'll be honest with you. I don't think it really mattered so much what the crew said. Um, you know, she had her first priority was for her to stay in. Her second priority was to make sure the night owls were protected. She even said this. And her third priority was getting out Alyssa or Aaron, period. That's that's where her target was. And, um, and so the only thing she floundered on was that she was not, and it wasn't her floundering. Um, was that she did not exactly what you said, Miranda, she did not get the opportunity to have her moment and say, you, I want you out. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure she had a whole speech ready for it and everything, you know, like we all do every time we go up there, we all are prepared and have a speech and we are ready for that moment where we beat the banker and we can just send that person home. Uh, So, you know, I hope she does get that moment again. Absolutely. I agree. And um, who knows, maybe we'll see some of Jordan coming up. Yeah. We, we, we literally have not had a confessional from Jordan yet. And, I, and it, it used to be me, like, who's Miranda? Now I'm gone. Now it's like, who's Jordan? But really? The only confessional she's had was in Swingers Club when she was talking to Joe. So that wasn't even a confessional. It was more so yeah. kind of what tell me what your game plan is. And other than that, so um, she had the first episode where she's, I, I think the very first episode, she's like, I want Boston Rob out. So she did have like, you know, but it was first episode. It was over with. And then there was, yeah, there she did. It was the very first episode. Um, I'll try to run it by you, Kim. I, but I remember uh, hearing that. And she was like, if, I, if it were up to me, I would get Boston Rob out right well, away. Yeah, she did. It's, it, it, some of those were weird confessionals. <laughs> My, mine was wearing a dress that I wore one time, which is the night I was eliminated. Oh, no, understood. Same. Yeah. So they definitely had some things out of order, but yeah. amazing editing because it fits the storyline. It fits the narrative. Um, you know, they were they were making me out to be a villain at the beginning, whether I was a villain or not. Yes. It just just so happened that those words came after I was eliminated when I said, if I'm thought of as a villain, so be it. I'll own it. Um, I never said I'm going to be a villain tonight. It, it, so it was um, but it fit. It helped build the storyline, the progression of the story. So it fit in with episode one. Yeah, it was good, actually. When I saw that confessional, I was like, oh, snap, we're in for a treat. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Miranda, I know you got you to gotta get yeah. running here in a second. You're po- she's got a live. Uh, she's very popular. Oh. Is there anything that you want to touch on before 
uh, we say goodbye for now. No, I just want everybody to stay tuned for episode seven because it's literally going to be a playoff of episode five and six together. There's going to be a big boom, big bang. Um, it's going to be awesome. Uh, if any of you guys want to follow me, you can follow me on Twitter at It's Miranda Rose or Miranda Rose Harrison on Facebook and Instagram. Um, and I'm down for any questions. Obviously, I did sign a do not disclose contract, so I can't disclose everything, but I am here to help and uh, answer any questions you guys want. So, But it was great. I'm, I love doing this with you, Jack and Kim. I, I love speaking with you also and hearing other people's perspective oh. on the situation. It's really fun. Um, so I hope that you guys have me and my dog Peaches again. So Absolutely, for sure. <laughs> I'll jump over there and watch you guys here in a little bit. <laughs> All righty then. Okay. Got a blast. Love the Jimmy Neutron reference. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kim. I think we can touch on a couple other things. Uh, some thoughts that I had from this episode. One, I've just I'm looking over my notes, and then we'll, let's do this. Let's do Jack's notebook and then Kim's notebook. Okay. So I've got Rob hates snakes. I I thought that was a fun little confessional. He's like. There's like a lot of people don't know this about me. I just hate the snakes. It's horrible. And he's smiling. He's having a fun time. It was it was good. I like that. Yeah, I found it very interesting because, um, you know, everyone's got their kryptonite. I guess snakes are Rob's kryptonite. Also, the Fafaru and uh, Survivor Marquesas. He tried to eat that rotten fish and spit it up. And then on All Stars, it made a. T- an appearance again and he made a face like he was so disgusted <laughs> the same thing happened when he was on the amazing race that's how he tricked a team into um yeah. basically them taking a 30 minute penalty to not eat it but get another team to also take that 30 minute penalty because they're going to be behind you so so i would say yeah it's going to be food and it's going to be um <laughs> snakes now <laughs> <laughs> snakes foot bad food uh Rob and Stephanie, I got this written down. I liked seeing them teaming up in this episode on the mission. And I'm just thinking, wow, if these guys were able to trust each other, they could just run the table on this show. Absolutely. I agree. I, I, Stephanie's a very strong person anyway. Um, but it'll, it, it's not going to happen like that ever because that's, she is too strong physically and socially and emotionally and strategically to um, fit into any of the quadrants of Rob's box of where do you fit? Um, she, she just wouldn't because of that. Um, but if they ever did, I had a lot of people online saying it would have been amazing to see Kim and Rob actually have teamed up instead yeah. of, and it's like, yeah, that would have been pretty cool, but there's no way Rob wasn't going to trust me in it. Right. Maybe another day, another time, but not in this one. All right, Kim, what do you have in your notebook? You know what? The one thing that I had down here was um, the coming out of Nick. Um, seeing Nick um, take some independence in his game and, finally pick a side. Um, He, you know, he spent a lot of time with Rob and well, with Rob and Aaron or Rob and Dawson or Rob and Jamil initially the first couple of weeks. Um, So seeing Nick finally formulate um, some sort of a strategy himself that doesn't involve Rob, but instead involves Amy that he shares a tent with and Stephanie and with Dawson. I thought that was um, really good for Nick. Um, And I don't know if he saw himself as being at the bottom of that alliance. If you're looking at Alyssa, Rob with Alyssa, Aaron and Nick, I don't know if he actually saw himself as being in the bottom of the alliance but in that alliance of four, he was the bottom. And so I'm glad he went, yeah, no, I'm not willing to play second fiddle and I'm going to go play this game. 
Anything else, Kim, before we wrap things up? Uh, gosh, um, I'm just looking forward to next week already. It's like it's only yeah. Tuesday and we've got to wait. Is today Wednesday? No, today's Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah, it's only Tuesday. We got a whole <laughs> we week. Wait six days. I know. And it's tough when you have these episodes that don't have any payoff when you're just waiting for that big payoff and yep. you're buying time. Traders had one of these where they just had a big cliffhanger right before they revealed who was going. Right. It's not the way I I'm a, I'm a purist when it comes to reality TV. I want to everyone. There should always be like one challenge. One person goes out. Let's just leave it at that. But like you said, next week is I'm excited for next week. I'm on that. Let's see. Next week. I mean, <laughs> There's so much potential and considering what they've done on weeks where, well, I don't know. So far this season one, there's potential every single week. There's, yeah. there's not yeah. a week without excitement and drama and tension and the comps. Oh my gosh. I love the comps. Um, even though I suck at them, I love the comps anyway. Um, so, uh, you know, we're going to, probably get a lot of the things all a lot of the questions answered next week um with where's jordan going to fall into this is it going to be five against three or is it going to be four against four because right now she's dead set in the middle um what's going to happen with with the rob mob over here with rob's alliance because now aaron with his 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 conversation with Stephanie and Stephanie spilling a piece of that to Rob. What's he going to do with that information? You know, he's kind of in a precarious position himself in that it's not like he can drop his alliance and form an alliance with the other people. He really can't because they don't trust him. They want him out. And how much can he trust either Alyssa or Aaron at this point? So Rob's got himself in a very unusual position for him. Um, and hopefully, hopefully we'll see what happens with it. I want to see him maneuver on this. I, I'm anxious to see that because Rob's, Rob's got himself in a place that he's not used to on Survivor or The Amazing Race. Yeah. For that matter. Yeah. It's really so, interesting. And especially because... As much as the number having the numbers are great, you only need one person to be in control of who goes home. So, yep. um, and then you could face the banker. It's it's a very different game. I love the way it's set up. All right, she's Kim Matina. You can follow her at Kim Matina on. Is that your social media for everything? Everything, yeah. Facebook, Twitter, um, Instagram, and um, when I do log in TikTok, I guess I don't know. <laughs> you you can be one of my 25 followers since I don't go in there. <laughs> <laughs> go and follow her. Always a great time talking with her. I'm sure we'll do it again. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me on. And I'll speak for Miranda. And thank you for having Miranda on. Um, she's amazing. And I love hearing her thoughts on stuff. So. Yep. This was a blast. All right. Well, thank you, Kim. Thanks, Jack. Have a great day. All right, folks, that concludes our conversation today, recapping the sixth episode of Deal or No Deal Island. Man, this show is getting so good. I'm very excited to see what happens next week. It sounds like it's going to be a big, big, big episode, so I can't wait to find out what happens. I'm very much looking forward to it, and we'll be back next week. Rook will be returning to the Jack Vita show as my co-host for the recap. I'm certain we'll have an exit interview as I think someone will be going home next week. I don't know for sure, but I think that will be the case. So we'll have an exit interview. Unlike this week, I want to say thank you to Miranda for joining me these last two weeks. Isn't she great? Didn't she do an awesome job? I uh, wish they could have shown her personality a little more on the show, but glad that we get to see it on this show. And then it was a lot of fun having Kim on. So I imagine this won't be the last time you will guys will be hearing from them on this show um, before the season concludes. 
And I'm also pretty confident that these won't be the only long form conversations that I will be having with members from this cast. Uh, I don't believe that they can speak until they're eliminated from the show in a long form format. Although I could ask maybe, maybe that's okay. I don't entirely know how the rules are or what any of that is, but it worked out these last couple of weeks to have Miranda on. Brooke will be back. We'll have guests joining us. It'll be a lot of fun. Um, make sure you guys are subscribed to the Jack Vita show, wherever it is that you are getting this podcast. If you're watching it here on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button down here. Uh, I think only like 15% of the people who watch these are subscribed to the Jack Vita show. So hit subscribe, turn on those notifications. You won't want to miss out on more Deal or No Deal Island coverage and more reality TV coverage and content as well. I have moved all of my sports content over to another channel. So you guys can go follow that channel for sports stuff. This channel will be dedicated to entertainment and reality television. You guys can follow me on social media. It is at Jack Vita Show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And until next week when we speak with Brooke and we get our exit interview and we talk about episode seven, I'm Jack Vita. Bring in the dancing lobsters.